Hey, everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Parvez. Hello. Hey, Christian, how are you doing? It's thank you so much for being this late. Uh, you know, in over in the UK and me in the uh, in the mountain states in the US, it's a uh, was it seven hour difference? So always on a Friday, no less. No, no, it's cool. it's, it's, no, thank you, thank you for having me. It's, it's, uh, it's an honor to be able to speak to you, and uh, yeah, just just get to know you. I guess um, it's, it's 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 really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I work late in the evenings anyway, so uh, it's just an extension of work. I see this as not is so. Well, it's I, I well, hopefully it's a little more fun than that, unless you really enjoy your work there. But uh, <laughs> well, let's before we get into it. So, for folks that don't know you, who are you? Yeah. Where are you? And what do you do? Yeah, so my name is Parvez Gumra. I'm based in the UK, uh, born and bred actually in the UK uh, all my life. Uh, my parents are originally from India. They came to the UK in the late 70s, early 80s, and settled here. Um, so yeah, I've been raised in the UK. Um, so I operate in the Microsoft business application space. Um, so that's Dynamics, CRM, CE mainly, and Power Platform. So I entered into the space in around uh, 2010. Uh, mm -hmm. Doing dynamic CRM development uh, using version four at the time. Yeah, you've and, so you've uh, seen a lot of change then. I mean, cause there's a lot yeah. been happening over the last decade. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot, a lot of stuff. So yeah, I've I've stayed with every version of the product since then. Um, uh, mainly doing hands-on development, uh, technical lead, design, architecture now. Uh, but over the last few years, my speciality has become ALM and CI/CD. Mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. seeing the you know the entire process from source control through, right through to deployment for for clients i operate as an independent contractor and i've been doing that for um over 11 years now prior to that i operate in the partner channel um and yeah i'm just really passionate about um the community activity and um helping people out and helping helping people grow and learn and that's that's what uh, my passion is very cool and where are you in the uk uh, so home is Leicester, so it's like central. Um, it's yeah. about an hour's train away from central London. But yep. most people know Leicester City now because of our success in the uh, English Premier League, right, a few years ago. So uh, it of course. put Leicester on the map for the right reasons for once. Yep. <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, I, I won't get in and talk about uh, football chatter. As an American, you know, it's like we don't fully uh, understand or appreciate it. And me, one of them, of... of uh, of actual of football, but uh, yeah, I, you know, having been to a few games, I actually got to go to a uh, a match. Where was that? It was a few years back. It was over ten years ago, but it was yeah. it wasn't Premier League. It was uh, it was like a minor game, but I mean, it was intense. Like, ha, where do people like? How, how did you learn all those songs that you all sing together? <laughs> like, you know, they, they got to say, yeah. but it's an experience. Yeah, I'm like yeah, exactly. I mean, I must admit, I'm not, I'm not really a big follower of football. I just think there's kind of too much money involved in it these days. But I obviously, I follow the bigger tournaments. Like we've got the Euros uh, going on at the moment, and uh, England are in the final, so I'll be watching that on the Sunday. So it should be good. That's very cool. No, I, I said so the only thing that rivaled that, like I've been to like an American NFL game. I've been to. I'm more of a basketball guy, so I love the NBA. But I was over in India uh, about ten years ago, and we went to a cricket match. Oh that, yeah, that was pretty yeah. intense. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, cricket that was, is like a religion. Cricket is like a religion in South Asian countries, so it's, it's right. pretty crazy. Yeah, pretty much the whole population follows it, and uh, it's serious stuff, you know. Oh it's yeah, stuff goes wrong. Then. I enjoyed it. Like I'm not a fan yeah. of American baseball. I I enjoyed it. it was the 2020. Uh, um, yeah. You know what? What do you call it? the the style? The the what is it? Just the it's. I, I know it's it's a faster paced, shorter length yeah. um, cricket style. Um, but it was much more intense. I enjoyed it more than American baseball. Uh, nice, so nice. yeah, anyway, but, uh, well, so let's, let's get into it. I, I, so how long have you been an MVP now? Uh, so it's been just over a month, actually. <laughs> so, so you're a seasoned, you're an old timer already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not, uh, you can see, you can see my little, uh, disc in the background there, um, on the video, uh, just the first one there for now. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean. I um I've been in the space for so long, and um, uh, the, it, my whole journey in terms of community contributions was very stop start or throughout the time. 
um, throughout my entire journey, I've been almost exclusively dependent on, you know, the content shared by others in the community to yeah. learn the stuff. Yeah. So um, you know, throughout the time, I always thought, you know, it was time for me to kind of give, give back and, and uh, pay my pay my way back, basically, because I've got all of this knowledge for free. So it's only fair that I kind of return, return the favor, right? So I always had the intention of kind of starting my journey to share my knowledge uh, with the community and things. But as I say, stuff just got in the way, um, you know, life got in the way. I never really fully committed myself to it. Until about a year ago, where I met somebody else in the community through work, and uh, we got into these really intense and passionate conversations about certain things with the platform. And um, they really, really pushed me to, you know, um, become serious about community contributions. And that's when I really started my blog and, um, you know, my community forum posts and uh, there's WhatsApp community groups that I help out mm -hmm. in stuff as well now. So answering those sort of questions. And I found that was a lot more satisfying because I felt like I'm, I'm helping real people out with real yeah. questions. And um, there's a sense of, you know, um, a, a good feeling about it because you're helping people. Uh, whereas with blogs and stuff, you don't always necessarily get that feedback from, you know, the people. The, who are right. The content. engagement, depending on, you know, yeah. where it is and what it is. And yeah, yeah. no, it's, yeah. I, you know, I just told somebody this morning, asked the question, like, well, how do I even kind of get involved if I want to go down yeah. this path? And I, and I said, look, there are, there are communities, there are forums. I mean, uh, I always remind people and maybe you already know this but like even out like facebook there are communities around the microsoft ecosystem there's dozens of them that i'm a member yeah. of some of them have yeah. tens of thousands of members that are in there yeah. there's a ton yeah. of activity but linkedin groups um discord of course the yeah. microsoft tech community there, there are forums yeah. everywhere yeah yeah 100 percent. and i think those, those channels are probably the best place to get help with stuff if you're getting stuck and uh, even if you're assisting, I think it's a great place to start because um, even if there's stuff that you don't know answers to, you've got the opportunity to take that away and kind of play around in your own environment, find the answers and help people out. Yeah. And they have, yeah. especially in the community forums, they've got this whole gamification thing going on. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it really helps people, um, at, you know, get the right answers and stuff like this. So that's where it all started for me anyway. And then, uh, as I say, I did my... I did my, I did a few blog posts. I still need to work out the right cadence for my blogs. Mm. Um, and then other than that, I have um, been assisting as a co-organizer at my local user groups yeah. and yeah. Uh, also doing some open source projects as well. So um, the folks who are familiar with Dynamics, they'll know about the XRM toolbox. So I built my own XRM toolbox plugin and um, that received a lot of love and um, uh, support from the community as well. So really grateful for that. Um, yeah, it's been very varied and uh, I might need to kind of scale it back slightly because it's getting a bit much sometimes. But, well, that, um, and that's another thing too, is that, but there's a natural ebb and flow and then, then there's a slower time at work and, or, yeah. you know, and, and jump back in. I mean, there's always like, do, do what you can. You don't have to boil the ocean. You don't have to do everything. You know, it's, it's uh, do what you can. I, I, I find though that I, it, it's good to keep a, you'll be consistent to have, uh, to, to be in there, have touch points at least a couple times a week, just so yeah. that even if you're slammed, you're, you're super busy. Um, I mean, I know people that block out, have a calendar reminder for like yeah. 15 minutes uh, every morning where they go yeah. look at a couple different forums and try to answer a question. Even if somebody's also provided the right answer, it helps, as you say, with the, the yeah. gamification, the scoring mechanism to go in there and like plus one, somebody's or be like, yes, yeah. that's, you know, Susan had the right answer. I support that answer. Like yeah. making comments like that, it, it's yeah, all meaningful. Yeah, yeah 100%. And even um, even if it's not a formal blog post you're writing, I find that, um, you know, sometimes you can have a conversation on people posts on LinkedIn. Um, and that drives a whole conversation with another people, people offering the different perspectives. And it's, and it's great because that builds everyone's knowledge, right? Not just your own or the people who you're replying to, but somebody who comes back to it in, in say, a week's time and looks at it and say, hey, you know what? this is a really great perspective that I hadn't considered before. So um, I do, I do some of that stuff as well. How do you advise people that are interested in getting more involved with the community, possibly becoming an MVP? Like what, what advice, what, what would you have done differently about your own path? Um, I, 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 what you said earlier about, you know, not trying to boil the ocean, I think is definitely one of the key things. Um, as I say, I, I definitely need to work out my right cadence for my blogs and 
work out what modes are definitely working for me and what I could commit to. I need to get a lot more organized around that, I think. Um, so that's something I definitely recommend. Um, there are some people who do it really, really well, um, but I, I'm, I'm quite bad at it. I'll, I'll have to admit, um, you know, organization needs to get better. Uh, but yeah, pick, pick, I'd say pick your area, pick um, a speciality about the particular technology or product or part of the platform you're working with, and then make sure you um, focus and um, tailor your content around that specific area, because that helps build your brand and you become known for that particular thing. And then um, if you're consistently delivering that content, um, you'll find that people often see you as expert in that area and they'll reach out to you privately with questions on that specific area. And um, that helps you build your own profile. It helps them with a certain topic and, you know, everyone's a winner. Yeah. I, I know that that's a comment I hear a lot is it's like, well, I'm, I'm more of a generalist. I'm, I'm interested in around the different areas. Like, yeah, but in what, in your industry, you can be an industry yeah. expert around that, uh, like yeah. around, like I'm a collaboration technology person. That's a pretty broad category. It touches a couple dozen different Microsoft products and areas. Um, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, like yeah. like you said, like I'm the majority of my content focuses on SharePoint and Teams, and mm -hmm. I, I talk Copilot, I talk Viva, I talk about you know the individual productivity apps and things that are out there, and you're always welcome to go and do that. But when it comes down to like that core focus area, you just have to remember for folks that are interested in becoming an MVP, is that ultimately it's the product teams, it's those product owners that have the loudest voice yeah. in who becomes an MVP, like like. You know, Parvez and I can recommend you if we know you and know that you're contributing, we can refer you into the program, but it's a product yeah. team in those areas where like, if you're too spread out, if you're not focused, you know, if you're not specialized in, in at least one area, it's just more difficult to become an MVP. It, it is because there's, there's so many generalists out there. You've got to differentiate yourself from the crowd, right? And uh, the other side of it is that the platform is also too big. Uh, for anyone to know everything, nobody every knows everything inside out. So yeah, exactly. Right. So um, a, so pick your niche and make sure you focus and um, deliver your content consistently uh, around that particular niche. I'd say that's probably the, my top tip on that. So what's it? I I actually I love this question. It's like so so with your perspective now, now that you're in the system, you're you're part of the system here. Um, do you see? Are there areas like within your focus where you think that are um, under there's under focus by the community where there are opportunities for people to come in and become experts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 uh, the the platform always is always growing, as you know, and there's always new new bits coming out. Um, obviously, AI and Copilot has received a lot of buzz recently, and um, there are people starting to talk about those sorts of things as well now. So that that's good. Um, another thing that's uh, becoming better and better by the day is PowerFX, um, and uh, that that uh, the PowerFX as a language and how it's creeping across different areas of the platform, um, with its own different nuances and variances across each product as well. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. there are a few folks uh, talking about those, and they've had um, you know great success with their content focusing those areas. Uh, but those are those are just examples, and there's you know lots yeah. of different areas that that um, that people can pick. The main thing is pick something that you're passionate about, you enjoy, and you've got experience and knowledge of, right? That you can share with people and benefit people with. So right. it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, I mean, if you if you are because you're right. If I always describe it as you know developing the healthy habits, like like my friend who who schedules 15 minutes every, at the beginning at the start of his every day, doesn't always able to do it but he gets the reminder so he's in on the forums tries to answer two or three quick questions there to start out his day but every day that adds up very quickly yeah. i mean yeah. very similar i mean you can uh it, you're, you're not going to continue to do something consistently if you don't enjoy it if you're not passionate that's right, that's about right. it so yeah, that's right if if if, if, you're, if you're going after the mvp award for the award itself that is going to very quickly you're going to run out of steam um, right. you, you're going to need to be passionate about what it is that you're doing. And the award is just a byproduct of your efforts around that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to the same thing, you know, build your, build your speciality. And for me, that's ALM and CICD for the power platform. So you'll find even my uh, replies on the WhatsApp groups, the discord groups and uh, the forums 
are focused around those areas. So I deliberately target the questions around those uh, because I know that's where I can add the most value and help people. Yeah. How are your, your, so you talked about being part of your local community. I'm on the board of my regional community here in, uh, in Utah in the U.S., and we've struggled to get back to our pre-pandemic numbers, attendance and things around that. How have you guys been doing? How, how's the local community been growing? Yeah, yeah so in the, in the UK, it's been pretty consistent the last few years. Um, as I say, I only became more and more actively part of it in the last year or so. So that was after the, after the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, before the pandemic, I was just attending as a, as a regular attendee mm -hmm. when I could. Um, but I was, I was, as I said, very passive, not not very active in my contributions. But I've not really seen any difference um, in terms of numbers. People hmm. are attending regularly, and um, they're showing an interest. And we've run. So my closest one is the Birmingham user group, uh, mm -hmm. which is about an hour away from Leicester in the UK. I recently joined as a co-organizer there. We run our events um, every other month, generally. And we get a decent turnout. Um, there, there are small kind of evening events um, on, a, on a weekday. So normally we get in the range of between 50 to 80 people attending. Um, That's pretty good. Which is, which is pretty yeah. good. But, but then we also have the national user group, which runs every three or four months, which is an all-day event as well. Oh, wow. Um, so, so And sometimes there's multiple tracks running in those. And then other than that, there's bigger conferences. We've got the South Coast Summit and the Scottish Summit, which yep. which uh, generally uh, occur quite every year, I think it is, right. um, at the moment. So those are the bigger ones in the UK. Um, but then I try and kind of volunteer at some of the other conferences around Europe as well. So earlier this year, I was at um, Color Cloud in Hamburg. I was volunteering there. And um, uh, I tried to attend, obviously, just without volunteering to do my own kind of learning and consuming the content as well. Yeah. So I was in Brussels um, a few months ago and in Germany a couple of times as well. So uh, it's it's uh, it's one of those, I'm trying to get to as many as I can, but I need to kind of balance it with work, obviously, and, well, and personal commitment. Well, that's again, and it goes back to the boiling in the ocean. Like, you can't be everywhere. We we still exactly. have to work, all those kinds of things. That, you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, I was... Uh, you know, fortunate to have worked for a couple companies where I was the chief evangelist. And my job was as the face of the company was to travel to all those events around the world. And so speaking was like my primary contribution. I was just all over the place. And uh, uh, I enjoyed that. And I made great connections, but it, it was a lot. And yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm no longer attempting to get anywhere close to that. So instead yeah, of three yeah. or four events uh, a month that I was speaking at attending, um, now I'm like I've got between now and the end of the year four more events. Like that's it, and yeah. doing so, plenty I mean, of stuff. Yeah, you don't. I guess yeah. that's my point. Is like you don't have to go and do all those things. It's great when you can. Yeah, uh, yeah but absolutely. Yeah, I mean, speaking is a whole different ball game, right? Because there's a lot, so much more effort that goes into, into that. You know the. The traveling and getting there and the preparing you do in advance and then making sure you deliver the right message when you get there and can connect with your audience um th there's a lot of risk and you know effort associated with that as well so you just need to kind of weigh those things up and um, decide whether that's something you really want to do and it's not it's not for everyone people yeah. can become mvps without speaking at all and people oh, right can can become mvps with speaking and doing nothing else there, there, uh, so I just met, in fact, uh, at the MVP Summit, which is, you know, you're going to be eligible for your first one this next year. I highly recommend attending if you're able to. In fact, you can go and register now for it if you're able to go, but um, just invaluable. But I met a, a woman who uh, never was not writing blog posts, had never spoken at a conference, was getting ready for her first time. And I'm like, well, what's your primary contribution? Forums. Answering mm -hmm. questions in the forums, creating scripts and yeah. and tools and solutions as part of yeah. it. Like, like, yeah. So if you are afraid of standing in front of an audience, you don't have to. You yeah, can still correct. become an MVP and yeah. influence yeah. the yeah. community. Yeah. Absolutely. Just find find the right thing that works for you and uh, things that you are comfortable with and you're going to be able to sustain because um, this is a journey that you're probably going to want to do for a number of years, right? So uh, right. you don't want to kind of um, burn yourself out. Right. Find the right pace yourself. It's a it's yeah, a journey, absolutely. not a race. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Parvez, it's really uh, it's great uh, meeting you, and hopefully, get to see you in person. I'll be over. Well, I was supposed to go to your neck of the woods. I think it's changed, but I'll be in Stockholm in December. That's about as close as I'll get to you uh, this year. Oh, 
but uh, ESPC. ESPC. Are you going to be there? Uh, I I was thinking about it, but I'm not sure whether I can make the date yet. But I'm still I'm still toying with the idea. But yeah, um, let me know. Let me know if you're there. The I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be doing oh, conducting yeah. a lot of interviews. I'll be running the uh, community reporters again, so I'm excited to be back. And that's one of my favorite events uh, in the world. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. yeah. For folks that yeah, want to uh, connect with you and reach out to you, where are you most active in social? Where can people find you? So, yeah, so LinkedIn is my home mostly, uh, most of my audience and, pe and people who uh, I engage with are on LinkedIn. Uh, but I'm also on X, not very active on X, but it's, it's there if people want. Um, but other than that, forums and my blog and um, yeah, that's about it. Well, we'll have, of course, all the links and you'll be able to find Parvez uh, at, on the blog, on the podcast, on the YouTube, on the video. So you'll, you'll be able to see that and please reach out. I always say too, like, don't be shy. MVPs are always happy to connect with people. Um, I always say that, especially with LinkedIn, add a note, say that you saw this video, for example, and would love to connect. So absolutely yeah yeah no no we don't we don't bite so yeah feel, feel free to reach out um ask questions always more than happy to help well it's great talking to you <laughs>